Welcome to Scared to Death. I'm your host, Sandman. If you don't know what Scared to Death is, then let me tell you. This podcast replays the best of old-time horror, science fiction, and mystery radio plays. You can catch new episodes on the fourth Friday of every month at 8 p.m. Central Time. Tonight's episode is Sign of the Beast. The sassy, non-believing wife of an archaeologist goes with him on a dig in a remote jungle and despite getting about a hundred warnings about native customs and curses, breaks every rule she can. She accepts an artifact from one of the malevolent natives and finds herself the victim of a curse in which she begins to turn into a meat-craving animal. It leads to some non-intentional humorous moments, especially when she wipes out their entire meat supply with her insatiable hunger. This radio play originally aired on the CBS Radio Mystery Theater on February 3rd, 1974. I hope that you enjoy The Sign of the Beast. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sounds of suspense. Welcome to the world of your own terrifying imagination. So many catastrophic things happen in this world because a lady asks a gentleman a question and then refuses to accept his answer. For instance, the Lady Eve. What great harm could it do if I took just the tiniest bite of that apple? Or the lady named Pandora. Why would it be a calamity if I should sneak just a quick little peek into that box? Now add to the list a charming young lady named Millie. She also has a question. Why can't I have the bracelet, Kevin? It belongs to the temple. Oh, nonsense. It's been lying here in the jungle for at least a thousand years. Who'd miss it? Its owner, the beast goddess. Oh, come on, Kevin. And you know what she does with people who steal her property. She turns them into animals. Really? Well, it's the local legend, Millie. Now, you just take that little bracelet off your arm and put it back exactly where you found it. Sure. Millie, I mean it. Sure, Kevin. Sure. Our mystery drama, The Sign of the Beast, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan. And stars Lois Smith. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. What is the difference between man and beast? There are those who ask, is there a difference? It wasn't very long ago that man himself was a beast, a carnivorous hunter with an insatiable appetite for raw meat. True, quite a bit has happened since. We've learned manners, we've invented civilization and culture, we've created a conscience, a code of morals, a system of ethics. But how deep do all these things go? Does the beast still slumber in each of us, waiting patiently, biding its time, ready at any moment to assert its mastery 
with fang and claw? This is going to be a very vital question for the very pretty and vivacious young lady who at this moment is riding in a helicopter. The copter is hovering over a large clearing deep in a South American jungle. Here you are, Millie. Thanks a million, Larry. It's a sure bet Kevin and Professor Jorgensen won't thank me. Better lift up out of here before they make you take me back. You know, Millie, I don't think I'm doing you a favor. Just toss my duffel bag over the side? What's more, it could cost me my job. Company's coming. And leading the parade, the adorable Kevin himself. Well, all ashore is going ashore. This ship's sailing right now. Thanks again, Larry. And if I ever leave Kevin, I'll marry you. Gee, and I thought you liked me. Now jump out fast. <laughs> And furthermore... And furthermore, you haven't even kissed me. Look, I'm very angry about this, Millie. You could still kiss me, Kevin. You promised to stay at the base camp. That was last week. But we're moving into the jungle tomorrow. Kevin, we've already been through all the arguments. <clears throat> Category A, danger from animals. Well, I brought the 405 Anson Carter X, and I'm a better shot than you are. Now listen, Millie. Category B, danger from rare, unknown, mysterious, incurable tropic diseases. You have just as much chance of getting one as I do. Dr. Jorgensen will be furious. Your Dr. Jorgensen is my Uncle Bert. I can handle him. It isn't a matter of handling well, people. Well, it's true, you know. Millie can always handle me. Uncle Bert, I love you. Be a kiss to see me. Dr. Jorgensen will have to radio that idiot Larry. I'm not going back, Kevin. Sir, won't you make her see reason? And I warned you about this, Kevin. Last year, when you said to me, how about an introduction to that good-looking niece of yours, I told you the problems, but you would have her. And I'm worth it. Oh, Millie, it's only because I love you so much. Uncle Bert, why don't we leave Achilles here to sulk in his tent while you show me around the camp? <laughs> And uh, there's somebody you should know, that tall, powerful-looking fellow. His name is Imara. He's our straw boss. Uh, Imara, whenever you want something done, you... Yes, Dr. Jorgensen. Imara, this is Kevin's wife. Her name is Millie. How do you do, Imara? It is an honor to meet you, Millie. Imara's in charge of setting up, taking down, and moving the whole camp. Ah, well, I can see he does a splendid job. Oh, no, no. The fact is, he does a very bad job. What? What did you say? I said he does a poor and unsatisfactory job. Uncle Bert. Oh, it's the truth. But everything looks to be so neat, so orderly. Actually, Imara is unbelievably incompetent. He deserves to be fired. I think that's unfair and heartless. Excuse me, uh, Millie. Uh, Mara, please go to Kevin's tent and bring Millie's 405 rifle. Yes, Doctor. It one. Uncle Bert. No, no, before you say another word. How could you be so heartless? You must understand, Amara, his primitive superstitions, his beliefs. But he's not some ignorant savage. You can tell by his speech. He's obviously educated. Must you insult him? Millie, you simply cannot compliment these natives. These natives? Oh, my, aren't we condescending. And why must we not compliment them? Will it spoil them as servants? Will it drive up the pay scale? Oh, Millie, I... <laughs> Where to begin? In Imar's religion, he is surrounded by a host of jealous, angry, implacable gods and goddesses. They do not tolerate praise for human beings. That's nonsense. One man's nonsense is another man's devoutly held belief. You terrify Imara when you praise him. Therefore, on this expedition, never. There's a charm in being a oh, quirky, kooky, offbeat... Just obey orders. Don't, under any circumstances, praise anybody. Understand? Yes, Uncle Bert, I understand. Things are bad enough. In the first place, you're a woman. Well, I like that. You need some prestige. That's why I sent him for the rifle. Hit some tin cans, break a few bottles at 300 yards, and you'll be one of the boys. Uncle Bert, you actually are a male chauvinist. Who would have suspected it? Well, I have to pack away my instruments. Can I... I trust you not to get into any trouble. Implicitly. 
Very bad shot, Millie. And now, I'll break that bottle next to it. Oh, that was terrible. Not bad, if I do say so myself. And that's every bit of 250 yards. Now, you see those three cats? You are a very poor shooter, Millie. That's nothing. You should see me when I'm in practice. Oh, my. I didn't know we had children in the camp. Who's that youngster by the kitchen tent? It is my little boy. He stays here with me till we leave the jungle. What's his name? His name is Isara. Isara. Oh, what a lovely no. name. No. No, it is an unpleasant name. I should think you'd be proud. Proud? Me? Proud? Why do you say I'm proud? Oh, because he's such a handsome child. No, he is plain. He is ugly. He seems so intelligent. Notice how patiently he lines up those stones and shells. No, you're stupid, I swear to you. He has no sense. He disgraces his mother and me. Well, what are you saying, I'm not? This child is a fool. Anyone can see that. Now, I must go. Where? I... I must go clean the rifle. I must go. Well... Oh, what made him so upset? Oh, oh! Now I remember... Amira, you may serve the coffee. I know the cuisine has left something to be desired these past few days, Millie. Oh, none of this bothers me. I can live on tea and toast, fruit and vegetables. By tomorrow sometime, we'll come to the ancient temple, the forbidden ground. I have the cameras ready. I, I must caution you, Millie. We were permitted to come here only because I promised the chief, who is my blood brother. We do have a wild family, don't we? That we bird? will not defile the holy grounds. Now, all around you'll see scattered ornaments, bric-a-brac, all, all sorts of things. Touch nothing. Uncle Bert, I hardly have to be told. We can photograph anything, everything, but it all belongs to the goddess. The beast goddess. It'd be dangerous to touch anything anyhow. You see, dear, this is very possessive. I don't know why I have to be treated like a child and indoctrinated with lessons in basic honesty. I've been on digs with you before, Uncle You Bert. take anything that belongs to the beast goddess, and she'll transform you into a wild animal. What's that, Uncle Bert? Those drums. Uh, you get used to it. It's just the native telegraph service. What are they saying? Oh, I never learned to read them exactly. I can just get the general idea. I, uh... Uh, I think it's news of death. Death? Yes, it's someone's death. How can you tell? Well, the, the basic rhythm speaks of death. And since it's a very beat, it's probably, well, the death of a child. A child? Yes, I'm sure of it. Millie, is, is something wrong? Oh, I have a headache. I think I'd better turn in. Amira, let's put the scaffold here. I want to climb this wall and study the inscription. Millie! Darling, you feel better? Yes, I, I suppose so. I'll, I'll just have to live with this headache. Come, on, uh, come here, Amira. Okay. Amara. Yes, Millie. Your little boy. I, Sarah... He's dead, isn't he? Yes. How did you know? I know. I'm sorry. I thank you. I mean, I... I hope you... You don't... Yes, Millie? I hope you don't think I'm responsible. Why should I think that, Millie? Because... Be, be, oh, I don't know. Yes, yes, I do. It's because I... I praised him just a few days ago, and you seemed so upset about it. I was upset? Oh, yes, very much. And Dr. Jorgensen told me... I know. That... I know what he told you. But my little boy, my... I said, uh, died of fever. The way so many children here do. Suddenly, with, without warning. Then you don't blame me. I blame you? No. I am not a... I felt terrible. I was afraid you might. You see, in our culture, 
We believe in praise, especially when it comes to children. We automatically say nice things about children. I understand. And have a gift for you. For me? We have a custom. When we make someone feel bad, we must give that person a gift. And the person must accept. Oh, that's such a lovely bracelet. Where did you get it? Here. Oh, but we're not supposed to... There are thousands, thousands of pieces of ornament. Who would know? Place it on your wrist. Ah, see how pretty it looks. Oh. Wherever you look, thousands of beautiful things. This is the very last. Besides, it is the custom. You see, you would have to explain why I gave it. I understand. And it would make them uncomfortable. Because everything they have come to believe about superstition would be wrong. Millie! Millie! Uh, what is it, Kevin? Bring the camera. I want to shoot these inscriptions. Thank you again, Amara. And it will be our secret. I'm coming, Kevin! Yes. Go to him. Go to your husband, arrogant, heedless, ignorant woman. You have defied my gods and killed my son. Your punishment has been decreed. It has already begun. Well, Aymara is obviously a man of parts. And he's already shown us quite a few of them so far. The punishment that has just begun will be expanded and continued when we return shortly with Act Two. Is it entirely valid to suggest that the best way to... There seems to be some historical basis for it. Archaeologist Kevin has ordered his wife, Millie, not to touch any of the artifacts or ornaments found in his latest discovery. And now he finds it impossible to take his eyes off her wrist. Is this the section of the temple wall you want me to film, Kevin? Kevin? Kevin, what are you looking at? What's that on your wrist? Oh, well, it's just... Millie, Dr. Jorgensen told you, I told you, under no circumstances were you to touch anything. Well, You I... not only touched it, you're wearing it. Look, the silly superstition. Where did you get it? Kevin, I don't like that tone of voice. Hey, hey, what are you two quarreling about? Show him, Millie. Oh. Uncle Bert, listen. I must ask you, Millie. Where did you get it? I found it. You found it here? Well, uh, around. Millie, I can tell by the workmanship. It was made by an ancient priest of the temple that has the same symbols. What's all the fuss? Millie, I thought we all understood. Why can't I have the bracelet? Because it belongs to the temple. Nonsense. It's been lying around the jungle for at least a thousand years. Who'd miss it? Its owner, the beast goddess. Kevin, are you serious? You can go ahead. Tell me the rest of it. Tell me she turns people who steal her property into animals. <laughs> Amara, let's put this... We're looking a point, Millie. If it were made of gold or silver or precious stones, I could understand. But it's just a twisted piece of copper. Well, for all I know, we're being watched. If so, you can expect a poison arrow through your throat any second. You know, I listen to the two of you, and I... Millie, your trouble is that you don't listen. Uh, let's not have an argument. I gave my word. That's all there is to it. Millie, you will take that bracelet off your wrist and put it back. Put it back exactly where you found it. Sure. I mean it, Millie. Well, sure, Uncle Bert. Sure. Here. These are the symbols the Incas used for weddings. Well, could they have originated this far north and east, Dr. Jorgensen? Millie, photograph this section of the wall. Yes, yes. Um, um... Uh, I... I need some more film. I'll be back in a second. Well, you don't have to go. We'll send a mirror. No, no, it's all right. Um, I, I just want to stop off at the kitchen tent. I think I need a snack. We just had breakfast. I know, but I'm hungry. Are you sure you feel all right, Millie? Oh, I'm fine. J just a little hungry, that's all. Millie, 
About yesterday. What about yesterday? The bracelet. Oh, that. Forget it, Uncle Britt. I know that you see so much just lying around. It seems silly to make a fuss over some trinket, but... I'm willing to forget it, if you are. Hi, Mara. Yes, Millie? Where's the cook? He will be back soon. I was wondering if there's anything to eat. What would you like? Well, uh, I, I'd like some meat. I uh, could cook a slice. Oh, would you please, Aymara, and hurry. Will this be enough? Just throw it on the fire. Yes, Millie. Mm, it's good. Oh, oh, that smells good. Uh, be careful. Don't burn it. I just put it... No, no, no. You're burning it, Aymara. That's good. It's good. Right now. Just the way it is. I tell you, it's fine. Yes, Millie. Let me get you a plate and a knife and a fork. Oh, hurry. Here you are, Millie. Oh. Oh. I bow. Put up some more. Kevin. Now, what is it, Amara? You asked me to prepare a list of supplies for the helicopter. Ah, yes, good. Uh, let me write it down. First, we need... Uh, Fresh meat. Okay, fresh meat. Wait a minute. Didn't Larry fly some up just a couple of days ago? Yes, Kevin. Oh, we should have at least enough for the rest of the week. The cook says he has only enough for tonight's meal. Oh, that's impossible. Would you like to see, Kevin? I take your word for it. But is someone stealing meat? I cannot say, Kevin. Well, I know we eat a lot of it, but still... I... All right, put down meat. And this time, get plenty of it. Is there any more meat, Hamara? I will go see. Meat since I've known you. Aren't you going to finish yours, Kevin? Well, I've had enough. Let me have your plate. Yeah, around here, I must agree with you, Millie. I'm starved, Uncle Bert. I don't understand it. <laughs> you must be famished. Honey, you haven't had meat in so long, you've forgotten how to eat it. You have to chew it before you swallow. Excuse me. Get out some chops. Those, oh, take them back. They're too well done. I want some rare. I'm sorry. This is all we have. Tell him to put up some more. There is no more meat. Well, that's right. Larry's due in with supplies in the helicopter. When will he be here? Well, I don't know. Sometime today. Why don't I take the 405 and shoot us a deer? Or something we can eat? Millie, are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Now, why do you ask? Well, don't snap my head off. Honey, you'd better get some rest here. You're tired. I'm and... not tired. I'm hungry. Millie, darling, something's wrong. Why? Well, because this isn't like you, oh. that's all. Kevin, I... I... Oh, I don't know. I, I have such a pain in my stomach. What, what kind of pain? Hunger. That's the only way I can describe it. But you shouldn't be hungry. I can't help it. I have this terrible craving for food. Oh, no, not for food. For meat. For red meat. Oh, Kevin. Uncle Bert, I'm frightened. Take I'm her to frightened. a tent, oh. Kevin. Take her to a tent. We'll, we'll give her a sedative. Oh, yeah. Yes. Maybe that'll be best. Maybe that pain will go away. Yeah. Come, oh. come on, dear. Oh, come on. Kevin. Oh, Kevin. You'll wait me when Larry gets here in the helicopter with, with, with the meat. Sure, sure. Promise. Promise. Yes, dear, I, I promise. Is she asleep, Kevin? Yes, finally. Dr. Jorgensen, what's wrong? I don't know. I've never seen her hysterical. Are you as worried as I am? I'm worried enough to want to get her to Rio, to a hospital. Let's radio Larry to get that damn helicopter here pronto. I just spoke to Larry. We have a problem. It seems a helicopter needs some repairs. What kind of repairs, for God's sake? I don't know. It was technical. Larry's working on it. Larry, Larry, he's an idiot. If he hadn't brought her here... It... It's our fault, yours and mine. We let her stay. What are we going to do? You say she's asleep. Well, all she needs is rest. Maybe when she wakes up, she'll be better. Kevin. Kevin. I'm here, dear. I'm 
here. Oh, I was so sleepy. I know, I know. It's dark out. What time is it? Well, it's almost midnight. You let me sleep. You didn't want me. I couldn't. But Larry was here and he brought them. He... No, dear. The helicopter's out of order. Oh, Kevin, I am so hungry. Well, I knew you'd be hungry when you woke up. So I'll make you an egg sandwich. No, no, no. I want the meat. But there isn't any. There's plenty of meat. Where, Millie? All around you. Out there. There's deer. There's wild pig. Can't you smell it? Oh, no, I... Millie... Let me have the 405. We'll be able to feast. You can't go... No, I... In the morning. You can't hunt in the morning. All the at night. Darling. All the time. Now, listen. Here are some pills to calm you. Kevin, something's wrong with me. I don't know what. I... I... I say things I don't understand. I have urges. Oh, I can't even describe. Hold my hand. Yes, yes, dear. <laughs> what is it, darling? What is it? Oh, my hand. My wrist is burning. Oh, oh, it's on fire. What's, what's, what's the matter, Marie? Look at her wrist. Oh, that's a very ugly looking irritation. How did you get it, Marie? Oh, I don't remember. I don't know. Oh, Uncle Bert, I don't know anything. I'm out of. I'm out of. Oh, oh. Now, Millie, you must try to be calm. Try, try, dear. Yes, Uncle Bert, I'll try. Now, tell me, how did you hurt your wrist? I don't, I don't remember. Try to think. Try to remember. You probably have an infection, some kind oh, of bruise. I don't have an infection. I'm not sick. I'm hungry. Do you understand? I'm hungry. You want me, Dr. Jorgensen? I'm our herb. Bring the medical kit. I'm hungry. Well, the first thing we have to do is put a penicillin ointment on that bruise. She's feverish, ravenous appetite for meat, bruise on wrist. Could be anything. She could have scraped it against a, a bramble, anything. Or an insect. Dr. Jorgensen, we have to get her out of here. Now, radio Larry, tell him it's an emergency. We have to do something. Don't lose your head. Listen, Millie. Kevin, Kevin, won't you get me something to eat? Yes, yes, dear, I will. I have the medicines, Dr. Jorgensen. Good. Oh, Kevin, you don't love me. I think we'd better put her to sleep. Hold your arm still, no, no, dear. No, no, you want to stop me. I'm going to bleed. Hold her arm, Kevin. No, no. Uh, oh. Oh. I'm all right. I want to ask you a question. Yes, Dr. Jorgensen. Have you ever seen anything like this? Yes. Where? When? Once, it was a man. He had invaded these holy grounds. He had stolen a jewel from the beast goddess. He... Yes? Go on. He then became a beast. He disappeared into the jungle, and he was never seen again. Thank you, Amar. You may leave. This kind of superstition we can do without. Maybe. And don't bite my head off. Maybe there's something to it. Something to what? To what he's saying. Oh, I know, I know. Primitive superstition. But look at us. You and me. Between us, we carry a considerable supply of the knowledge of the civilized world. Between us, we have degrees in medicine, anthropology, chemistry, sociology... Can we explain it? Are you saying the legend is true that Millie has offended the beast goddess, being punished? I don't know what I'm saying. But look at her. Look how troubled, how agitated she is. She's flushed, breathing rapidly. She could burst through that sedative any minute. Kevin, I'm so hungry. Try to rest, darling. I'm going to get on the radio. The helicopter is out of order. We're past all that. I'm going to speak with the hospital in Rio. I'll describe her symptoms. They'll arrange to get her there. My wrist. Oh, oh, my wrist. Oh, oh. Arthur. It's burning. Oh. Look at her wrist. Look at her wrist. Something's on it. Oh. It's a design. It's the shape of that bracelet. Kevin, it's your imagination. Yes, it. Look. Do you see that symbol? It's on every ornament worn by the goddess. The design decorates her dress. It's just a raw, ugly scar with some very wavy lines. But it's her sign. The sign of the beast goddess. The sign of the beast. It, it could be a coincidence. Do you believe that? I, 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 tell me, do you believe it? Kevin, I don't know what to believe. <laughs> You've got a pretty good handful of advanced college degrees in that tent. Most of them in the sciences. 
And it's surprising how quickly knowledge abdicates in the face of the unknown terrors of the jungle. Can science be just a veneer also? I'll return shortly with Act Three. <laughs> Hamlet said that there were more things under heaven and earth than were dreamed of in philosophy. Hamlet should be with us in a tent, deep in a South American jungle, amidst the ruins of an ancient temple, because there are more things than any of us can dream of. Is she still asleep? I think so. She shouldn't be left alone. I'll go back in the tent in a second. Dr. Jorgensen, I just had to find out. Were you able to radio the hospital? Kevin, it's two o'clock in the morning. What's the difference? My contact there, the chief of medicine, is due at seven. Can't he be reached? Kevin, he's returning from vacation. He's on the road. It's only five hours. Don't worry. Poor Millie. You know, she really didn't mean any harm. And there are scads of this stuff lying around. I know. It's a pretty little thing. Who'd miss it? She didn't think it was stealing. Kevin, don't talk as if... As if what? As if you believe this is the revenge of the beast goddess. Can you rule it out, Kevin? If they can't send a copter for her, I'll carry her out of here on my back. Those damn drums, what are they saying? Is it important? I'm getting so jumpy. What are the drums saying? Oh, nothing. That isn't so, Dr. Jorgensen. Why do you make an issue out of it? Why do you refuse to tell me? Now, you can read those drums. The way I can read a telegram. Now, what are you trying to keep from me? It's just that I thought the agitated state you're in right now... Well, don't make it worse. What are those drums saying? Well, it has to do with revenge. Revenge? What was that? Well, those are rifle shots. Well, who'll be firing at this hour? Come on. Millie! Millie! Well, she's gone. She's got a rifle. Amira, wake everybody up. Rouse the camp. We have to find Millie. 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 Be careful now. Watch every footstep. It's a good thing there's a moon. Millie. Millie, Millie where are you? Millie. Those shots came from just about here. Why did she go out? Oh, let's quit pretending. You know why she went out. To hunt. At night? Why? Because she's hungry. Oh, Kevin. When are we going to face it? Admit it. Millie. Millie, can't you hear us? Bert? Look. Where? Oh. Oh, no. No, no. She can't be dead. Millie. Millie. She seems to be breathing. There's blood all over her. But it isn't her blood. She must have shot this deer and... Uh, Millie. Millie. Are you all right? I feel so nice and warm. Have you reached the doctor yet? Yes, Kevin. They're sending a copter. It'll be here late this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Oh, that's great. They're doing the best they can. Oh, sure. I'll be reasonable. Reasonable, huh? My wife is being destroyed before my eyes. It seems there is, or they think that this might be a very unusual disease. Oh, come on. It's, it's, it's an infection. She might have picked it up from the bracelet. What are you talking about? It could have scratched her when she put it on. And? Well, it's been lying here for hundreds of years. All kinds of parasites, microorganisms... Anyhow, it seems this disease creates enormous cravings for protein. And what does your man suggest? Massive doses of penicillin. Well, do we have enough? I... I hope so. I'm Amara. Yes, Dr. Jorgensen. Bring me the medical chest. Kevin? Kevin? She's awake. I'm coming, dear. Kevin? No, Millie. Now, lie still. Don't get up. Oh, I feel so comfy. How's your wrist? My wrist? Oh, it's okay. It only hurts when I feel hungry. And you're not hungry now? Mm, no, no. Oh, you know, I had such a crazy dream. I better not tell you. You've got to. 
you've aroused my curiosity. You won't believe it. You try me. Don't laugh, promise. I promise. Well, I dreamed I went out into the jungle alone at night. Oh, there's a picture for you. Imagine me alone in the jungle at night. Anyway, I dreamed I shot this, I think it was an antelope. Oh, something like that. Yes. And I was so hungry, I ate it right there. What a dream. Oh, you know, I felt so full just before, but just talking about food seems to give me an appetite. How about some tea and toast? Tea and toast? Ooh, how about a nice chop? Or steak? Rare. Very rare. Well, Larry's been unable to fly up the supplies. Doesn't matter. I can go out and shoot. Later, Millie. Later. Mm. You're not hungry now, mm. are you? Oh, well, not very, but in a little while. Okay. Mm. Then just a little while, huh? Promised. Okay, I promise. Where have you been, Doctor? I've been waiting in the tent. Don't leave her alone again, Kevin. Where's that penicillin? That's just the problem. What problem? Look, we just can't have any more problems. We do. The penicillin is gone. That's impossible. All the bottles of penicillin solution, all the tablets, gone. But how? I don't know. Are any other supplies missing? No, everything's here. Alan! Go to it quickly. The penicillin. Amara brought me the chest. The drug was missing. We have spares in the supply depot. I looked. Gone from there, too. Kevin! 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 I'm hungry! Oh, Kevin, you don't know how my stomach hurts! And my arms! It's on fire! Millie, everything oh, is all right. Sure, yes. Just let me take the 405 and shoot something. No, Millie, no. Kevin, I'm going. Millie, try to get some rest. I don't need rest. I need food. I need meat. Please, Millie, oh. fly back. Rest. Take your hands off me. Millie. Let go of me. Help me. Oh. Somebody give me a oh. hand. Wait, wait, wait. I'm oh. tired. Uh, I'm all right. Get some rope. Let go of me. Let go. Where's that damn helicopter? He could never find us at night. He'll have to wait till morning. I don't know if she can wait until morning. Listen, we don't have medicine. Let's try the other thing. What other thing? The legend. Maybe we can placate the goddess. Kevin. Is there anything else we can do? Now, there's something happening here. The penicillin is gone. How do you account for it? He may have forgotten to pack it. Nonsense. Last night, you said the drums were talking about revenge. Revenge for who? For what? And what are they saying tonight? It's revenge. Kevin! Come in here! I'm coming. I'm coming. Kevin, I want the 405. Untie me. No, no Millie. Millie. What did you do with it? Untie me. What did you do with it? The bracelet. You didn't put it back, did I'm you? I'm hungry. I'll die, Kevin. I'll die. I want to tell you. If you just tell me, where did you put the bracelet? I, uh, I'll get you some meat. Yes. Oh, Kevin, yes. The bracelet. The bracelet. This is this, this my makeup kit. Oh, no, untie me. Let me hunt. Where did you find the bracelet? Oh, you promised to untie me. Where did you find the bracelet? I must go hunting. Oh, Kevin. Where did you find the bracelet, Millie? I didn't find it. Tell me the truth or I'll... I'll never untie it. I didn't find it. I'll leave you here to starve. I'm out of it. What about Amara? I, I promised him I wouldn't tell. What about Amara? Oh, he, he gave me the bracelet. Oh, Kevin, untie me. Please, untie me. Amara, you will tell us where you hid that penicillin. Or I'll blow your brains out. You may kill me. That's not the way. Let me beat it out of him. For the past two nights, Samara, the the drums have talked of revenge. Whose revenge? Mine. Upon whom? Millie. For what reason? She killed my only son. How? She made the gods jealous. 
She spoke of his beauty, his intelligence, his skills. The gods were angry. Of course, but she didn't know any better. It made no difference to my son. He died. And your revenge? I gave her a bracelet. I tricked her. I fooled her. I made her take it. Where did you find the bracelet? So that we may return it with a suitable prayer and beg forgiveness from the goddess. I will not say. Stand aside, doctor. It's my turn. You may kill me. No, he won't kill you. Who says I won't kill him? Be quiet. No one will kill you. But I am a blood brother to your chief. I will tell him that you committed a sacrilege. I will tell him that you stole a bracelet from the goddess for an evil purpose. Now you may go, Amara. What do you mean, he may go? He'll be disgraced for life. His wife, his parents, his brothers and sisters, all will be driven from the village into the jungle. No one will speak to him. Why do you stay here, Amara? We have no further use for you. Oh, I believe we owe you a month's wages. Here, plus two weeks' notice. The bracelet, it was taken. I took it from the arm of the statue of the goddess. Now repeat this, Millie. Why do I have to go through this mumbo-jumbo? Oh, just do it, Millie. Now, place the bracelet on the wrist of the statue. <laughs> Ugly old girl, isn't she? Millie. Okay, okay. Now, say, forgive my sin. What sin? Okay. Forgive my sin. What else? That's all. That says it. Well, that's a relief. I must have been a trial to you boys. What happened to me, anyhow? The way you were shooting penicillin into me. How are you now, darling? Okay, I guess. Oh, but I'm so hungry. Hungry? Starved. For, for what? Meat? Meat? Since when did I ever eat meat? Just point me at some tea and toast and salad and fruit. I might even have an egg. It's always good not to put all your eggs in one basket. Always have another course of action in reserve. What cured Millie? The atonement before the goddess and the return of the bracelet? Or the penicillin. Or both. I'll be back shortly. That's going to do it for this episode of Scared to Death. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's presentation of The Sign of the Beast. You can find past episodes of Scared to Death, as well as my other companion podcasts, Parareality and Set It Off at www.parareality.com. Just look in the archives section of the website. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back on July 23rd with another episode of Scared to Death. Thank you.